You're watching Single Process with Joe and Bob. We created this video series to help you navigate the difficult process of divorce, and we hope this helps you on your journey. Our topic today is the three top marriage killers. Three, I think there are like 30, but I, yeah, I think no, we I should... think there are lots. Right. But I think the three that if you really can focus on these and take them out of the equation, I think yeah. you stand a better chance. Agree. No, I found the funniest expert. I mean, she's a therapist, but she she calls herself a fixer. And honestly, like most of the couples that go to her go to her in a, in a point of distress and she helps them come back to their marriage. So she's very pro Marriage, as we are, by the way, as we um, are, by the way. And I want to ask her, if you are getting bogged down by these three marriage killers, yeah. can you fix it? When is it too late? Yeah, well, she's a fixer. So okay. what she's going to say... She's going to say, always fixable. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna say, that's her, what she's right? getting money for. Oh, okay. But let's find out. So today we have with us uh, Lisa Ryan, who is a therapist out of Westport, Connecticut. And she does work with individuals. She works with couples. But she helps you open lines of communication fix your marriage and put things back together. So, fix yourself. Fix yourself, Which right. is really important which, too. Which is maybe as, as important as fixing the couple, right? Absolutely. So thank you for being with us today. Thank well, you for having me. I love what you're doing. It's you do? Idea. I do. All right, let's jump into our three marriage killers. The first being on your list, work. And people are gonna work, so what do you mean by that? Well, uh, people spend too much time at work. And when I say that work is a marriage killer, I mean that it, it becomes more important than uh, the relationship, than family, than virtually everything else. So right. I always work on priorities to make sure that people put their relationships first and then their kids first and then work third. Yeah, but you can see how this happens easily. You get more validation at work than you get from your home life. <laughs> your kids are rude to you. Your <laughs> wife or your husband doesn't care about you anymore. I mean, I honestly, I think that's a big part of it. Well, it, yeah, but validation can be fixed at home. You, you know, it's you so easy that. to appreciate a person just by saying thank you or, like, I see you. I often ask people to, like, say to their husband, yeah. thank you for getting out of bed at 5 o'clock in the morning and getting in a cold shower and getting on the train. Oh my God, oh my God, I appreciate I that. Can I ask you, is it the cart or the horse? Are people using work as an escape or are people feeling they have to work to be successful to support their families? Um... People put work ahead of everything else, Joe, because first of all, it's the culture uh, largely in Manhattan. It's work, 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 work. So the, that work culture, you know, is incorporated, you know, um, into the man or woman because I certainly have a lot of female commuters as well who put work first um, accidentally, unnecessarily. Um, also, people want to provide well. And then they sign on to these massive mortgages and they have to like keep, keep it, it up. up your life. Yes. They're like gerbils Absolutely. on a treadmill. You, you and know, you're stuck. It, it's and, brutal. And what it's they brutal. don't realize is if that the relationship ends in divorce, trying to keep two of those homes on a you know, alive uh, uh -huh. is just impossible. It is. No, totally. I'm even having trouble with a crappy rental. <laughs> I know. But the other thing I would say is, you know, um, so my ex hasn't worked for a couple of years, and that's brutal on a marriage too. Yeah, especially when you're getting divorced. Right. It's hard to split, you know, one third no from going zero. On. I always exactly. Think so. Okay, so number two is kids. Yeah. Kids are a marriage breaker. Uh, they are. They are. Um, they sometimes women who are lucky enough to stay at home, or even those who are not, um, turn raising kids into a profession. That's, and, that's so and, true. And, and men and women, they they both agree. Once we take care of everything else, once we take care of the mortgage, once we take care of the kids, once we take care of your mother, then there will be time for us. And yeah. I think that relationships are worth more than breadcrumbs. Wait, now your parents. Let me say this. Do put themselves first. first. They absolutely prioritized their marriage and had a very happy marriage. Yeah. But they put the Now, Joe is screwed up. But, but her screwed parents up. were really in love. <laughs> yeah. And, well, that's because we, you came second, Joe. Well, they, <laughs> they kept saying, my dad would always say to me, when you leave, we have got to exist together yes. as a couple. Yeah. And you're going to go yeah. off and live yeah. your own life yeah. if we get this That's parenting right. thing right, right. And we need something to hang on to after that. That's right, Joe. I often say, if you do it well, raising kids takes 18 years. Other than taking calls because they need you to write a check. You don't hear from them because they're launched with strong wings. Launched, but yes. They're launched, but your marriage can last 50, 60 years. I have clients um, who are deep into their 50th anniversaries. So, 
yeah, with infidelity sometimes wow. too. So you'd wow. be surprised. Yeah, yeah, it can last. Yeah, so so yeah. So kids, so don't put the kids. I mean, kids don't put important, work. But don't, don't put, put kids, kids ahead, ahead of your relationship. Okay. And then third on your list is devices. Yeah, yeah. You rarely hear about it, and you rarely see it uh, on the internet. But I hear it in my office all the time. Wait, hold on. I got to get my phone. Wait. <laughs> what, what? <laughs> Okay, right. Wait, is that what you're talking about? And that's exactly what I'm talking yeah. about. Uh huh. Keep going. I'm listening. Uh huh. Uh huh. It's that that uh, uh, nobody gets your un, uh, uh, divided attention any longer yeah. because people are reading their cell phones or their laptops. Or and, and I am so guilty of this. Are and you? I have both my partner and my kids say to me, you know, could you put down your phone? Mm. I feel like you're aware of it, and it's still a problem. But it's still I mean, a problem. Very... And we're modeling terrible behavior for our kids along with it. Yeah. By the way. Oh right. It, it, yeah. I mean, it tells everybody else around you that. They're not as important That's exactly as what right. you're looking I at. I think so too. Okay, so moving to some of the solutions. So it's interesting to me that a lot of couples come into you with challenges and leave happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know why that's interesting, but it, it's just, <laughs> what are you doing? It sounds like you're helping them reprioritize. That's exactly what I do. Behind. That's exactly what I do. I ask um, a, a, a spouse to, to say, what does it feel like um, being married to your spouse in terms of his priorities? And then I will ask the same thing of the other. And then I will rearrange it. You, you know, oftentimes I will hear, you know, work, kids, dogs, <laughs> her mother. Some people don't even mention me. Oh, it's so yes. sad. It's like, ooh. So I rearrange it to self-care, uh, which is exercise and good health, um, number one. Number That's an interesting number one. Okay. I think because so, Because if yeah. you're not in a good place, you can't possibly be a good partner. That's right. You know, a healthy relationship is, is consists of two whole people. Right. Okay. You know, oftentimes people are looking for somebody to fill their holes. Big mistake. So, yeah, self-care is number one in okay. terms of priority. Number two would be uh, um, uh, the marriage. Your relationship um, doesn't necessarily have to be marriage, but your relationship. Number three would be kids. You have to keep them breathing. Mm -hmm. At least until the age of 18. Well, how do you tell people to peel back from that part with the kids? Uh, well, it's all where you put your time. Um, saying no to kids, saying no to work, saying no is important. And, and setting schedules and boundaries and calendars. I often ask people to schedule time to be together. You know, whether it's between seven and nine, no devices. And you time know. to have sex. I'm going to say it. Huge. Because I can't believe you just said that. Yeah, no, but I think what ends up happening, particularly when you have kids, you're worried about them walking in, you're worried about making time, you're staying up late, you're no. getting up early. That's you why God made locks. Right. No. <laughs> Put a lock on your bedroom door. <laughs> that's right. And no television in the master bedroom. Okay. Absolutely. That's porn. another device. You can watch porn. Well, okay, that's a whole other topic. Stop. I guess okay. you're right about All that. All right. But no, but you're interested. It is interesting that sex, especially I hear this from men. Men connect through that kind of intimacy. Women may need a hug or a nice gesture, but men in particular, yes, need the physical. I think it's both. Both? Men report to me that they have an emotional connection when they make love, and women report to me that they don't want to make love until they have an emotional, emotional connection. connection. And yeah. so I say to men, you're going to have to suck it up and wait, because logically the woman needs emotional connection first in order to get your box checked. So that's what goes on in my office. Okay. All right, so oh. we have got to put the marriage back on the table at the front and stop But one last point yeah. I'm going to make about that. I had a marriage therapist who told me to go spend more time with my ex-husband. By that point, I was so annoyed. We were on each other's nerves. I didn't want to do that work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what would you have said to me? Well, I would have asked you what it is about him that annoys you. And I might have asked him to... And it would have run over the hour session. Cut and it out. Yeah. We would, yeah. Well, then I would have identified to you that you're not perfect either. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That means for some of ever yeah. hearing that. Yeah. <laughs> I told okay. you, I'm a fixer, you're not a, fixer. a therapist. Exactly. So, so it's interesting that you do with the individuals too. So if you're working with a married couple, yeah. can you break into each individual or do you have to do a married couple together? When I see couples, um, if I think that somebody is, is holding something back and, not, and wanting to say something but can't in front of the spouse, I will yeah. uh, ask each of them to come in individually. I, I, don't, uh, I do it about fi with 50% of my, my couples, okay. and I don't do it all that often. Um, but um, I I if there is a divorce, uh, oftentimes the person who doesn't want the divorce becomes my individual mm -hmm. client. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there you go. All right, so wrap it we up. We could so do so much more on this, but tons. it sounds like we just need to be aware. If your marriage is in trouble, 
take some time to reprioritize. Quit your job, ignore your kids, and leave all your devices on the charger. <laughs> ignore her. Listen to Lisa for more information on this and all other divorce-related topics. Check us out at www.singleprocess.me.